B12 that is cobalamin absorption. Animal products are the only source of B12 for human beings. And B12 presence in animal products is due to synthesis of B12 by microorganisms. For example, in case of ruminants like cows, their foregut contain B12 synthesizing bacteria and that is that B12 is available to us in their milk and meat. But in case of omnivores like pigs and hens, they get B12 from their diet and it is available in their meat. And fish, they get B12 by eating plant carbs. So milk, meat and fish are three main sources of B12 and it is present to lesser extent in eggs. B12 requirement is about 1 to 3 microgram per day but body stores are about 2 to 3 milligram that is 1000 times the daily requirement. So even if diet is deficient in B12, stores are adequate for roughly about 1000 days that is 3 years. In food, B12 is food protein bound. On entering stomach, Inside, once inside the stomach, B12 is released from food protein by action of pepsin and hydrochloric acid. The released B12 then binds to R protein belonging to group of proteins called haptocorins. These are B12 binding proteins. It is derived from saliva, that is it is a salivary glycoprotein and that this B12 R protein complex reaches duodenum where R protein is digested by pancreatic proteases and B12 is once again released. This B12 then binds to intrinsic factor. Where does this intrinsic factor come from? It is synthesized by gastric parietal cells. And it travels and reaches duodenum and binds to B12. This complex B12 intrinsic factor complex then travels, finally reaches terminal ileum. Inside I know it enters enterocytes. This complex B12 intrinsic factor complex enters enterocyte by receptor mediated endocytosis. The receptor is called cubum. It's combination of two proteins, cubilin and amyloidless. Once inside enterocyte, intrinsic factor is degraded by lysosomes and B12 is released. And then it is exported out of enterocyte by protein called multidrug resistant protein 1. Finally, B12 reaches blood. In blood, 80% of B12 binds to haptocorin, similar to haptocorin senior layer, also known as transcobalamin 1. This haptocorin binds tightly to B12 and does in advance delivery to tissues. It may play a role in transport of cobalamin analogs to liver. And 20% of B12 binds to transcobalamin, also known as transcobalamin 2, falling, forming holotranscobalamin. This transcobalamin trans, transports B12 to bone marrow and other cells. This complex B12 transcobalamin complex binds to Transcobalamin receptor. This is a protein called CD320 and once inside again B12 is released. Transcobalamin is degraded and B12 can be converted to adenosyl cobalamin and methyl cobalamin. These two cobalamins act as cofactors for B12 dependent reactions. In a similar manner 
transcobalamin transports it to hepatocytes, B12 to hepatocytes, and inside B12 is either stored or excreted in by. Finally, in kidneys, B12 uptake is by receptor called megalin present on proximal tubular cells. In addition to methyl cobalamin and adenosyl cobalamins, there are two other cobalamins called cyanocobalamin and hydroxocobalamin. These are present in supplements and it can be converted in the body to active forms. Thank you.